Coach Smith, my big question for you right now is um, who is going to, who's going to step up to be defending on the perimeter for you this year? Considering Good you lost coaching question. <laughs> two great perimeter defenders last year, and I don't see any immediate candidates who are experienced. Um, well, I think obviously nine out of the 12 of our players are sophomores and freshmen. Uh, so if you're looking to look at experience, I don't think you're going to see that as a strength of ours. Uh, but, but with that said, I've been uh, sort of pleased with the defense I've seen relative to what we've lost. Uh, what I mean by that is it's sort of a little bit of everybody. It might not be as stunning as a Jasmine Thomas defensively or a Karima Christmas, uh, but everybody has sort of put their mind to it a little bit more, which is helpful. So you're looking at Chloe Wells. Uh, somebody who has, can be an excellent on-ball defender. Uh, Chelsea has been very strong in practice, particularly off-ball. She's got an incredible anticipation skills. Uh, on-ball as well. Kalia Johnson, a young freshman coming in, um, she's done that as well. So, um, um, more, and, that, and Shea Selby, I, I'm sorry, Shea Selby, you know, it's kind of like a little bit of everybody more than just a few. Given uh, that you put a lot of ball pressure on, like personally you had, are you going to change your defensive focus a little bit to sort of defend the rim more than put pressure on the perimeter? Or are you going to basically try and do what you've been doing all along? Um, you've got great yeah. post players who can really block shots and defend the rim. Yeah, it's hard to back off the dominance we've had in the league in, in defense. If you look at all the stats for the past two years, in pretty much every category we've been first. Um, a couple more, you know, second, but overall it's hard to back off. Well, not back off on defense, but back off on pressure. Basically, change your defensive approach. Well, I feel like I feel like if you back off on pressure, you back off on defense. I feel like that's what you're. You know, you've got to, you've got to pressure the basketball, and it's got to be important to you and to the team. And you know, we've got like a long history, in the, especially in the past two years, and it, it's sort sort of precedent that we like to keep close by as a reminder. Um, but we'll see. I mean, we've got a great schedule. We've got a lot of tough people to defend. Can we try to see Haley more on the show this year? Uh, maybe. I think she's got uh, Haley can take <laughs> 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 um, Haley can play both the four and the three, but she's been so dominant right now. Not the four. Um, I would like not to move her too much. But yes, yeah, you will see her on the perimeter. Yes, Haley's a better perimeter defender than I think we're all aware relative to the fact that she did not do it last year because she was primarily at the four. So the answer is yes to that. I don't know when. I don't know timing-wise. Got to be a little careful there because she's been so you know, strong in the four. What more do you think we'll see from Chelsea in her season? Oh, uh, she hasn't touched the tip of the iceberg to what she could do. She was injured for most of all last year, as you know. Um, basically played half the season. I don't think I've ever seen a young person like Chelsea play half of a season and still be considered on the wooden watch as a sophomore. I mean, I think that speaks to her skill set. Um, Chelsea's get to a place where she can be in shape. She was not in shape all last year, not so much to her fault, but the reality is when you're out that long with an ankle injury, it, it, it takes a lot out of you. I was pretty amazed how, how she did under the circumstances. When I think about that game-winning steal against Maris, that terrific Maris team, I mean, I don't know how she did have what she did. Game-winning shot against State. Yeah, the game-winning shot against State. I mean, she wasn't in practice, um, couldn't be in practice, you know, regularly. Um, so, again, if you could stay healthy and really, really work hard and work on our conditioning, I think there are no limits, and I think uh, none of us have seen half of what you can do. So mm -hmm. much of uh, the leadership <clears throat> last year fell on mm -hmm. Jasmine's shoulders. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you looked to her, to her for shots in the class or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who's going to fill that role this year? I think a variety of people are going to step up. Again, our point guards, Chelsea. You know, Chelsea has already established herself as uh, ex getting excited with game winners as a freshman. So obviously Chelsea. Uh, Chloe has come back incredibly strong um, in terms just of her overall ability out there. Um, I look at them as our chief point guards, those two. And I, I would say that they probably have the ball in their hands a little bit. Um, but it, it could fall on Haley Peters, somebody who's been known to make huge plays. Haley Peters was the reason we had a five-point play here last year in Greensboro because of the screen she set. Um, 
you know, so I think it could be a little bit of everybody. I, it, this team has got a lot of different weapons that way in terms of who can step up and hit game winners. What about Trisha? What did she do this year? Well, she got the, she was most valuable player of the summer league. Uh, summer league was pretty interesting this year for the kids, for the women. You know, first time in the, in the our area to have that. I think Trisha's playing with a great deal of confidence. I think she looks a lot different. You'll have to see her to know. Yeah, that. I, I did see her. Right. Yeah. Yeah, she's I, just, I didn't she's recognize tight. her the first time. Sorry. Yeah, she's tight. She's much more in shape. She's lost that freshman sort of. I don't. I'm not sure what's happening here to uh, being sort of a sophomore who totally gets it. Uh, one of the best years I've ever seen in the game. Do you see her competing to start? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen Elizabeth Williams play a bunch of times, and what I noticed about her is that she really seems to be kind of a piece you've been looking for for a while, which mm -hmm. is post player you can dump it into every single possession and force the other team to react to her again and again and again. Without well, her, she's just remarkably consistent. She really is. Same thing over and over. And if she misses, she'll get her own rebound. Well, she. The thing for us, you know, that we've really enjoyed growing at Duke and we have with this freshman class is post speed. We could fly. I mean, we could really, really go down the floor. Um, so for us, I mean, being able to play a you know, transition offense, people always talk about guards when they think of transition offense. I, I talk about posts and how they can run the floor. Allison sort of set the tone for that last year. If you remember the play where Allison went down the floor and Chelsea found her on a long ball pitch pass, and it was kind of a good dagger in that particular game. That didn't happen very often last year. Matter of fact, I think the first time it did happen was in the championship the ACC tournament, meaning we had not been able to really stretch, you know, stretch defenses that way. So when I, when I think about the Pope's, I think about we have three players with exceptional speed, Allison, uh, Elizabeth, and Amber, and Haley can really, and Lena for that matter, she's been sick lately, poor thing, but but um, all of our posts can really go from fouling to fouling at a faster speed. I which puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Allison, in particular, in her zones, seem to be extremely effective mm -hmm. going from baseline to baseline to close out on shooters. Uh, do, you, do you see uh, the other post players like being able to extend that zone as effectively? Yeah, yes. Uh, well, yeah, the two matchups that we run require our post to be active. Allison's always been invested in number one, her wingspan, number two, how aggressive she is. <laughs> she really doesn't mind getting in people's faces. But I think that we've really, or can build off that further with the presence of uh, Elizabeth and Amber and, of course, Haley and Lena who are returning. So, yes, we have more depth to that ability. Uh, to pressure the ball in those matchups, more length. Um, we, you know, we get pretty big when we go like this. You know, we get pretty big. Is this the youngest team you've ever coached? Yes, and then this is my 20th year as a head coach, and I have never coached a team this year. Uh, what does that change? Uh, there's obviously a lot of ability, but you guys were laughing a little bit last year about how the freshmen would do things away from the court. How does that change the culture? I think it. You know, I think it's really interesting. The energy is really. It's, there's a light feeling about this team, a very light, you know, excited feeling. Um, as a coach, I think I just need to pay attention to them in terms of how I need to best coach them or respond to them. Uh, but they're interesting. They've already learned how to turn to each other. They've already got things on this team in terms of little things that they do, quirkies and, and chemistry things that I had never seen. You mentioned Chelsea being the last year. Same thing with Rache. Yes. Where is she at right now? Both okay. health and health. She's been slowed a little bit by some shin issues. So she, I'm not going to say she's 100%. I will say that she's in a much better place than last year at our old rate. But she's got some shin soreness, which prevents her from doing some things pre in the preseason. But overall, uh, she's in practice now full. And she looks terrific. A lot more mature player. Lot, just, just one year older makes a big difference. Did the voters get it right you were second? This year, or, or is that maybe too ambitious for a team this young? Yeah. I don't mind, whatever. I mean, that's just not, we don't focus on that. You know, I mean, we're going to focus on what we create, and we haven't created anything yet, but we, we want to create something special. And I, it's a whatever, we're, that's where we go, that's where we go. I mean, I can't begin to know. I don't, I don't even know what the other teams, you know, really truly offer at this point. But it's, it's all about what we create. If you had to try out a starting five tomorrow, in fact, I guess you, you will this weekend on the Blue White game. Who would it be right now based on their performances? Um, it'd be uh, Chelsea and Chloe 
and Tricia and um, Elizabeth. So Elizabeth Williams at the center. Mm -hmm. Having an assistant that went, you know, from Duke to Caroline, does that heighten the rivalry at all, or does that no, no real effect on anything? Um, when you say fully, uh, physically, yes. Um, she's doing great, but not in terms of conditioning. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, a, it, yes, the ankle structurally and everything's great. Um, but when you talk about the conditioning and the way we play, she's not there yet, but she's working very hard to get there. Speaking of injuries, Amber Henson's kind of had a history of knee trouble. Uh, can you sort of speak to her current status, um, how much she's practicing now, what sort of anticipate for this season? Yeah, she, yeah she's not 100%. Uh, we're not going to anticipate. We don't know if she will be able to get to 100% now that we're starting the season. That always has a way of compromising soreness and things like that. Um, so she's going to she's going to play through what she has to deal with. So she's not going to be 100%. Uh, she'll be coming over the bench most likely due to that fact, and she might practice a little bit less. What kind of leadership role do your seniors have to come off the bench more? Um, everybody leads on our team. It was really the same way last year, even though I know we had three dominant seniors that, that did a great job leading, but every year we kind of fix the same philosophy, which is everybody step up, and I think it just means more this year because we can't fall back on the three experienced seniors. So I think this year it becomes a more critical issue that everybody leads when they can, you know, when they're given the opportunity to step up. Um, so our seniors will be great. I mean, Kathleen and Che will be great. Allison, Allison's been terrific. I know that you all may have talked to her about the initiative as we partnered with the Duke Cancer Institute. Uh, we partnered in the whole Ramblin' Rose run where the whole team was there, about 8,000 people down in Durham. Um, it's an incredible thing. 2,000 runners and Allison was in charge of all the volunteer work. And you know, it, this is an example of leadership off court, which is very valuable to us. And Allison was, you know, the intern for the Duke Cancer Institute, so she arranged all this. And you know, this is how we deal with things out there that are difficult uh, to deal with. And, and so they both, you know, have been Chelsea as well, uh, tremendous leaders already. So it's just important that everyone kind of step it up because we only have a couple seniors. Is your own health 100 percent? Oh, my health? Yeah. Um, knock on wood. What's a lot made of you having cancer? I don't, I don't remember a lot of it when it happened with the, with the Durham Bulls game or with the, with the problem that. Yeah. How, how long were you suffering in the situation? How much did it affect that? Um, it, you know, it was my second year at Duke. It was really painful at that time because I didn't know a lot of people at Duke. And um, I think it was just a, like, like anyone who gets a diagnosis like that, just extremely scary. Uh, the part of me that was interesting was I had to cut open my forehead twice. And so I, I looked very, um, like, very much like Frankenstein. And um, it was a difficult time. And they gave me you know, the conversation they do, they do give me, which is they, you know, they think it's in the nose down here, and, you know, chemotherapy and all that jazz. And I was sort of really stung by that, that I would ever have a doctor speak to me that way. Um, but I've been very fortunate. Uh, I finally cleared my mole mapping so I don't have to go back every three months. It's kind of funny to take clothes off and take pictures. And that, I always wonder about where those slides go. <laughs> especially especially the China. But so now I, so I, 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 find I got cleared to not go back for a year. So that was a quiet accomplishment for me personally and my family. Homeland Security is probably Yes. <laughs> Maddie. Maddie's doing great by the way. Riverside Volleyball. If you want to write about something, I'm talking. Write about Riverside Volleyball. They are 23 and 2. They just won the conference uh, last night. It was senior night against Jordan. And I was one of those parents who gave out flowers with my husband and my son Jack. And, and there's a picture of Maddie in the paper with Monet and Jones, another guy, one of her teammates. And um, they're a terrific team, Riverside. Those pirates. Something else, I'm telling you. Something else. It's a special team. I'm hoping they can live up to it and turn it What's she doing next year? She's going to Miami, Ohio. On scholarship, yeah. Basketball scholarship.